Tennessee football, the Johnny Majors Show. Action coverage of the volunteers and other teams in the SEC with the coach of the University of Tennessee, Johnny Majors, and the voice of the Vols, John Ward. Presented by the insurers of Tennessee. When you renew homeowner, car, business, health, and life insurance, plan with that insurer in your hometown. By American National Bank, serving Chattanooga and Hamilton County with 26 conveniently located branch offices. Stop in and see us. We're with you. By the Ford dealers of Tennessee. For the best deal and an efficient new car, you'll like the Ford deal you drive home. And by Miller Brewing Company and Miller High Life. When it's football time in Tennessee, it's Miller time. Now here's John Ward. Part of the tradition of the Tennessee Kentucky football series is that the game is played in bad weather. Rain was predicted in Knoxville for the game on Saturday as Tennessee entertained Kentucky. It didn't rain. It was a beautiful day. Before the game, the University of Tennessee Army ROTC unit was honored as the outstanding unit in the United States during the past year. Then it was football time. And when it was over, Tennessee had registered a victory over Kentucky by a score of 28 to 7. Coach Johnny Majors, the final home game for 20 seniors and for the volunteers over 93,000 fans on hand to see it. Well, John, my congratulations to the ROTC uh, unit. Uh, it takes teamwork and everything to win, and we're pr proud to see any time Tennessee is first in anything. Uh, it was an untypical Tennessee day as far as the weather goes, but not untypical as far as the hitting goes. A very hard-hitting affair. 13 to 7 at halftime. Kentucky's team plays hard. They played tough. They always play tough against Tennessee, and they have an outstanding coach in Jerry Claiborne. You can tell they have a class. You can tell they're disciplined. They're going to continue to get better. Uh, it was untypical. Uh, you know, when I first saw Tennessee play against Kentucky, I was a senior at Tennessee. I mean, in Huntland High School. It snowed the night before in 52. It was General Leland's <laughs> last game. And we, my dad and I took a Greyhound bus up here and saw Kentucky and Tennessee tie 20 to 20. I shall never forget that game. I won't ever forget any game that Tennessee and Kentucky play in. Certainly not today. It was a good effort. I'm proud of our team and proud of the great support our fans gave us. Outstanding day, outstanding game set to go. We've got a lot of coverage of this football game, a lot of excitement, interviews, and everything to go with it. We pick it up after Tennessee had kicked off. Kentucky was stopped. The volunteers with the ball wearing all orange and throwing the football Alan Cockrell. It's complete to senior Darrell Wilson. First and ten for Tennessee. Here to tell you about it, the coach of the volunteers, Johnny Major. A good pass protection, John. A good, uh, a good pocket for Alan to throw out of. And thrown to a very classy uh, receiver, Darrell Wilson, who has just become an outstanding receiver for us. I don't know how badly he's hurt. He possibly has a broken nose in the ball game. I hope not because he is a terrific young man and a, a heck of a receiver. A pitch goes to Furnace, sweeping the right side for a gain of a yard. It's second and nine at the volunteer 49-yard line. Kentucky made a struggle up front uh, running the football, particularly in the first half. It disappointed me somewhat. Our offensive line had made progress the last couple of weeks in the last two victories in blocking. And Kentucky made us go the long, hard way. We had to open up our outside attack right now, the outside attack, speaking of it. A good option play to Chuck Coleman from Cockrell and a fine first down. Coleman from Louisville, Kentucky, taking the pitch, getting wide, and rambling downfield for the first and ten for the Volunteers. No and score, first quarter. And John, isn't he showing progress? He's running with a touch of class. He's, he has good, quick feet. He's a good broken field runner. He's running with more determination and more surge and holds on the football. A gain of four, second and six. Tennessee nothing, Kentucky nothing. The Volunteers in Kentucky territory. A sweet play. The pick up about four, and I see that, that flame yellow flag, that nasty-looking flag out on the field. It just dirties up the carpet. Tennessee guilty of illegal use of hands on offense, and so here's the assessment against the Volunteers, and it will move it back until now with the ball at the Cat 40. It's second down 15. What was bad about that? We had two people call for our holding, and that's no good. Almost hit a crack there. A quick, uh, quick screen pass from Alan Cockrell to Willie Gauff. The Kentucky's good pursuit. Uh, Helps us about a four-yard gain. Third down, 12, Tennessee. Nothing to nothing. Cockrell. What's the rush? Screen pass almost breaks. Uh, that was blocking by our line. I want to see uh, one lineman down there, and that was uh, Doug Furness. I mean, Mike Furness, number 63. Doug almost broke it. And in goes Quad Reves. Look at those strong legs he has. He's a former linebacker in high school. Extremely competitive. John Warren holding. Tim Rumsey snapping. Right on the button. Smooth as silk and a lot of power. 47 yards, and Tennessee leads Kentucky by a score of three to nothing. And for Reves, that's field goal number 10 in a row over a span of four games. 
Over 93,000 fans. It was a gorgeous day for football. Perhaps even more beautiful because everybody had expected rain. Our kicking off, John, was a key point this week because Kentucky had a superb kickoff return unit. They had just killed Florida. The first three times they ran kickoffs back against Florida, the last man made the play on Florida's end of the field. We worked awfully hard on it. We've improved our kickoff coverage in the last two weeks for the first time in two years, and Quad kicked off beautifully. It's first and ten for the Cats, wearing white with blue numerals. The quarterback is Randy Jenkins, a junior, from Stickleyville, Virginia. Rolling left, wants to throw. Pass. This complete. That was a fine throw. Anytime you roll as far as he did the left and throw back against the grain, he was right on the button, and frankly, you throw it like that, you're going to complete some passes on anybody. It's first down and Kentucky running. All right. That's the tackle I like. Reggie White above the waist into the numbers. We talked about it. We worked on it this week. We've improved a somewhat. That's the way a tackle is supposed to look like. And it's no game. Second down 10. Don't forget that. That's a better tackle up above. Even though he fell forward, there was penetration on the part of Kentucky's running back. But Joe Cooper been tackling low. He tackled up around the numbers. Donegan picks up five. It's third down five. The last thing I said to Joe Cooper in the locker room, Joe, don't forget to tackle above the numbers today, or in the numbers. Kentucky sends a man in motion, and now uh -oh. with the ball, this is Adam. Too much daylight. You can't just talk about tackling below, above the numbers. You've got to work on it, get pictures in your mind, get them on the practice field, and take it into the game. It's first down, Kentucky, on the seven-yard scramble by Adams. Wildcats guilty of delay of game, I think, or perhaps, no, it is illegal procedure. Their center jumped before the snap that time. Kluge established contacts, and so it's a five-yard penalty. Screen pass, but much better pursuit. I see three, four orange shirts coming from inside out, and Bill Cox works on that very hard. Bill Cox, Bill Shaw. Bill Shaw, our defensive line coach. Watch this, Reggie's hustling. Mike Cover's hustling. They redirect, here comes Castile, here comes Henry, and here comes Kluge. Now that is more like it. Lateral pursuit redirected once the pass develops. Tennessee leads 3 0. Jenkins in Hands trouble. Up. Hands Great up. play. Oh, it was. He had him trapped, but he got out of it. Who is that? Mike Cover, our new captain, catching from behind. Mike Cover, number 93, catches up with Jenkins. But Jenkins goes for the first down and 10 to go on a 19 yard skip. Good pursuit. Good pursuit. Adams carries. Gain of two. A wave of orange at that time. It's got to be second down and eight. Tennessee leads 3-0 in the first quarter of the game. Kentucky with the ball moving toward the north end. Uh-oh. Did a sprint draw play on this? Joe Cover, the first man on the tackle. In fact, the, uh, the individual tackle there. Bill Bates was close. Uh, doesn't look too good right now. It's third down and one. Watch out. Watch the quarterback Henry. throwback. Tailback Henry. Chicken. Touchdown, Kentucky on the flea flicker. They had that former quarterback in there, a tailback, and he's a possible thrower. Henry throwing back to Jenkins. That'll work on a lot of people and a very, very good call. So Kentucky goes up on top of Tennessee by a score of 6-3 to three in the first quarter of the game. The Kentucky band is there, and here will be the extra point attempt, which is in the air, and the kick, as you see by referee Al Gay is good. So at the end of the first quarter, the score finds Kentucky on top of the Volunteers, seven to nothing. We'll see the second period coming up in just one minute. By a score of seven to three, the Wildcats kick off. Tennessee begins a drive, moves downfield. We're ready to go now in the second quarter. Tennessee heading toward the north end, third down and 10 at the Kentucky 14. Conklin play. Yes, sir. Out of what, Chucky? Chuck didn't go down with the first tackle that time. That's, That's Coleman for 12 yards. Good execution. That's a boy, Allen. Very fine job of Cockford. The last minute timing. There's a lineman blocking downfield. Good blocking up front. And fine work by our quarterback, Cockford, and our tailback, Coleman. So Tennessee has the ball. It's first down and goal at the two yard line. Dog going it. Now let's go, lineman. That Kentucky plays tough defense on the goal line. They play tough defense, period, and also in short yardage. Linebacker over the top. Tennessee with Coleman driving up the middle, but on the play, Kentucky lined up off sides, and the penalty of half the distance to the goal gives Tennessee the ball first and goal at the one. This is something we need to improve on. We had a mix up there, got us a loss. I don't know what Cockrell did there, but he was supposed to hand off to the tailback, 
The busted player either didn't get the hand off to the tailback. Big play by Cockrell to recover the ball, as a matter of fact, and so Tennessee has it second and goal. At the three-yard line. Oh, man. They read our mail that time. In fact, uh, Alvin Toes does a relatively good job getting the ball to down about the half-yard line. Where it will be for Tennessee, third down one, trailing seven to three. Second quarter. Cockrell asks for the timeout. And so it's going to be Tennessee back to the line. Cockrell at quarterback. Cockrell looking, passing, touchdown, Jeff Smith. Come on, Jeff. Well, that young man's coming well. Kenny Jones has given us some very good play at tight end this year. A fine senior from Nashville. And Jeff uh, Smith is a sophomore. up now to 235 pounds. He's really made, well, he's made excellent progress in the last six or seven games. Here's Reves for the extra point. It is up, and as you see, it is good. And Tennessee leads Kentucky by a score of 10 to 7. 12.51 to go in the first half of the game. And it will be Reves kicking off. Cockrell used good judgment on the touchdown pass. He had an option run or pass and an excellent kick by Mr. Reliable Quad Reveille. Goes through the end zone as you see the ball skipping down about two yards past the end line. Kentucky first and 10 of the 20. Jenkins at quarterback. Pass. It's complete. We have better containment but not real good force. And a good job. A tackle made by Bates, a senior from Knoxville. Good job at Kentucky. Execution wise. Good tackle, Bates. See, as one of our alternate captains, Bill Bates and Willie Galt, alternate captains, and my co for our new captain. That was a fine tackle. Best tackle Bill's made. Adams carrying the ball close to the first down. That's another good job. Good effort by uh, young Cooper. But Bill Bates again makes the stop. Bill's very active. Kentucky going for the first down, and it's Big Abraham. He's got a first down, Scooping and again, the, the tackle is made by Bates. And look at his tackle. I liked his form. I liked the way he took him on. First and 10 for the Cats, trailing by a score of 10 to 7. Stay up, linebacker. Stay up. Don't go to the ground. Well covered by Mike Terry. I think the defenders were in good shape all around that time on the pass. Pass is incomplete. It'll become second down and 10. Kentucky with Jenkins at quarterback. Fullback is now Donegan. I think we had the best work we've had all year in the pass coverage and tackle. All right, Bill. That's probably we're going to memorize his name here. <laughs> Plus some other help inside. But Bill Bates on a blitz is the first man there. Good tackling. No shoestring tackling. About to drive me crazy the way we tackle our shoestrings right here. We talked about that work on this week and had better pass coverage work. There's another man, Johnny Williams, tucking above the waist. It's Williams stopping the runner after the pass completion, and it's fourth down upcoming. Here I you see the pass. Probably seen more above the waist tackles in the first half here than I have any other three or four games put together. So it's Williams on the stop, and here to punt will be Kentucky. The punt is away with golf deep for Tennessee. We need to make 100% improvement with our tackling this week and also break into the ball, which we did last week to have a chance against Vanderbilt. Tennessee first and 10, passing is Cockrell. It is intercepted Kentucky. Ooh. It's a good reaction by the offense. Bad interception, but good reaction by some people covering after the ball was thrown. So Kentucky goes right back on offense with their best, uh, best field position to start a series. Donnie Jones was on that. Uh, Darrell Wilson, those young men both are very competitive. All right, DeJuan Henry did some penetration at linebacker. The linebackers uh, during a big part of the year were too slow reacting, but the last couple of weeks, I can see them breaking to the ball quicker. Second down eight, and off Adams, left side. Good containment by Mike Terry. A couple of yards too much, but good containment. Who else was it? Third down and four, as it was Henry and Terry teaming up on the tackle. Another linebacker making a play close to the line of scrimmage. And again, Joe Cooper, for the first time today, I've seen him tackle low, but he had penetration. Our linebackers have waited too much this year until the last couple of games. And we've talked about it, stressed it. We've got to keep doing it, linebackers. Keep coming to the ball when you see it. Come to it. A loss of a yard on the play, and so on fourth down in the punt will be Calhoun for the Cats. The punt is away. Golf takes this one on a fair catch at the 16-yard line, and Tennessee has it first down and 10 to go. Speaking of Mr. Reliable, who also is an, out an outstanding threat, Willie Galt, 
is a sure-handed receiver and has great confidence in the kick return area. The volunteers to the line in the I formation against the five-man front. This is Alvin Tolles. Well, not much. Offensive line has to be crisper this coming week. The first half, I felt like we were a little bit sluggish up front. Second down and seven. Johnny Jones at tailback. Jones. Yeah. It's going to fall forward, Johnny. Good tackle by Kentucky. Gain on the play of six. Tennessee is faced with a third and one at the 26-yard line. Jones. We made the first down on short yardage, and we sustain our drive and momentarily. And a first down now. Let's we'll see what happens. First and ten for Tennessee, leading in the football game by a score of 10-7, second quarter. Alan Cockle at quarterback, the center there for Tennessee, Spreno. Three illegal, our left guard jumped that time, plus Kentucky diagnosed the play quite well and forced the option pitch very well. So Tennessee draws a five-yard assessment. It becomes first down and 15 at the 22-yard line. You stop yourselves, John. You stop yourselves on offense by your own mistakes too often. I'm talking about most teams do. Our team has been better disciplined this year. Uh, not an easy catch, maybe, uh, but Cockle had to throw the ball. He was on target. Johnny Mack could have caught it, but still, uh, it's been a pretty decent catch. Pass is incomplete. It's second down, 15. Here's Alan Cockle. Passing downfield. It is complete. And a first down to Mike Miller. 23-yard gain on the pass play that went from Cockrell to Miller, a second look. That's, that's excellent protection and a fine throw from Cockrell who shows outstanding leadership. He's a great competitor. And Mike Miller concentrating well and getting all the yardage he could get that day. So Tennessee picks up a first down at the 45. The ball's lead, 10 to 7. Wasn't anything there, that's for sure. <laughs> Tolls only a yard. It'll be second and nine at the 46. They whipped us up front without question on that play. Just whipped us. Tackle to throw. And the ball is batted up. Into the air. Incompletion. Probably here is the man who got his hand on the ball to deflect it down. And it's going to be for Tennessee third down nine. And they had a missed block there. Guard missed the block. And you know, they have no time to play. You have to kill the ball. And now we're going backwards. So when you go backwards, you have to punt. So here comes Jimmy Colquitt into the football game to punt for the Volunteers who lead 10 to 7, nearing the end of the first half of the game. Colquitt's punt is away. And it will be received by Kentucky. It's a little block. Oh, poor tackle. Poor tackle. And somebody makes a big save. I believe that's Jeff Smith making the tackle. First man down there made a missed tackle. It wasn't, it wasn't right. You ought to make that tackle. 14 yards on the return. It's first and 10 Kentucky at the 35-yard line. This is Adams. Pursuit. Field. Face. I tell you what, now, I haven't seen the film, which I won't see till uh, Sunday, but I'll tell you something. Uh, Bill Bates is playing some of the best football. He's been a fine performer for us and shown by his leadership, selected as one of the captains. He has made some fine plays. Who's the first man underneath that? Reggie foul? White. Uh, boy, Reggie, I'm here. To... Bobby Ditton, the host of volunteers. <laughs> Third down five. Forcing more, forcing more. Got to force him more. Too much time. The pass was complete to Phillips for the first down at the 48 yard line. Knocked out of bounds by Bates. Bill Bates is making uh, as many plays as I've seen a player make in a long time in this first half of the Kentucky game and tackling by far as well as any young man we've had in any, any film I've seen on television. Back to the left side. This is Jenkins throwing downfield. It is incomplete. Oh, that's a fine play. That's a very fine play. Carlton Peoples broke to the football. When the ball was thrown, he watched the quarterback's eyes, I'm sure, and here he comes over the top. Very alert play. And excellent camera coverage of that play for you as it's got to be second down 10 Kentucky. We got some penetration, but where's our force? There it is. Carlton Peoples again. I need to see our ends in the play a little bit quicker. And this, there's, there's Wofford, there's Clues. Our end gets knocked back too much. In fact, he may be getting tackled there. <laughs> but Carlton Peoples supports like a secondary man is supposed to support. And so Peoples it's third down 11, a loss of a yard on the play. Come to him, come to him, come to him. All right. Screen pass. Lee Jenkins broke to the ball. All right. Had inside pursuit coming, too. 
and some enthusiasm. They like it when they do well. A second so remember look. that, uh, Jackson, some defensive coaches. I love defense. I love it like that. So that catching and waiting is no good. That's where to go. Lee Jenkins making the play on Abraham, and so Kentucky on fourth down will be punting. Tennessee leading 10 to 7. I love to coach defense. I coached defense for seven years. There's nothing like it. Nothing like it. It's fun. All right, Willie. Gets out of bounds at the 19-yard line. Tennessee first down at 10, 129 to go in the first half of the game. The ball's clinging to a three-point edge. You have to have fun on defense. You have to have fun coaching it. You have to, have to be aggressive, but you have to have fun. You have to have enthusiasm, and that's more like it. Don't play. Chuck Coleman. Coleman moving forward for 14 yards. Done. We had less than two minutes here. We have our two minutes offense, two minute offense going right now. But I believe two timeouts left. This is a similar drive to the old Miss drive before the halftime last week. This time it's Morris who's in there on a draw for a yard. Tennessee uses one of its two timeouts, and it's got to be second down and nine. Good protection. Deflected by Duncan. Very, very fortunate, but very alert by Clyde Duncan, who's showing improvement as a junior receiver. We're going to need those juniors to come through him. He and Lenny Taylor will have to do a lot of good work next week. Alert play. There's another point. Go to the football on offense. Go to the football on defense. It's first and ten at midfield. Tackle. Furnace on the catch. And Furnace picks up three yards. It's second down seven. Oh, too much pressure. That's the middle of our line. Just went sleeping. That's bad, yes. Pass is thrown oh, out yeah. of bounds, stopping the clock. For Fulmer, I imagine him a little better tempo this week. I'm sure that he and now will get to now doing that better. Good job. Pass Good is job. complete. That's Morris for 10 yards down to the 37-yard line. Tennessee has one timeout left, uses it, and here is Quad Rave we to attempt a 55-yard field goal. We had 13 seconds remaining. I'd like to have had five more yards uh, before we kicked this, but I was afraid to take the chance. And we called on number four. Kentucky calls it a timeout, trying to get him, uh, I'm sure he's thinking about it quite a bit. He has great poise, and he knows he has a good team with him. Look at that snap. From the end zone, you'll see it. Right through the middle of the 56 yards. 55 yards officially is the call, and there you see it. Tennessee leading on the 55-yard field goal at the end of the first half. We'll talk with Coach Majors here at halftime. The score is Tennessee 13, Kentucky 7, and we'll be back in just. He leads Kentucky by a score of 13-7. to 7. The Wildcats came into the game without a win, and Coach Majors, I, I was impressed with their attitude and the way Kentucky played. I don't know whether it's proper to say that on a Tennessee show, but Kentucky played tough. Well, John, I've just never, ever seen a Kentucky team that didn't play tough against most people, particularly against us through the years. And I've taken a freshman team to play at Lexington. I've played as a freshman up there. I've played freshman teams down here at Knoxville. I've been here as an assistant coach, as a head coach, and they're darn sure going to play tough with Jerry Claiborne as head coach. Jerry Claiborne is one of the fine football coaches in this country. His track record is outstanding at Virginia Tech and at Maryland. He's disciplined, he's smart, and his team is going to get better, and we better keep getting better to stay ahead of Kentucky and beat him. Anytime you beat him, uh, it's, it's a great feeling. 10, uh, 13 to 7 certainly was no time to breathe easily because uh, we knew that they had fighting spirit. They played like winners the whole season. So Tennessee does lead by six points at the end of the first half. We'll have more comments with Coach Johnny Majors here at halftime in just. 13 to 7. Part of Tennessee football tradition is the fact that there have been a lot of great football teams over the years, and much of it started back in the early 30s. And members of the team 50 years ago on hand, honored at halftime at the University of Tennessee playing Kentucky. About 20 players returned who were members of the 1932 team. We'll be seeing the second half of this football game between Tennessee and Kentucky after this brief pause for station. Identity. The game is Tennessee 13, Kentucky 7. It's been a battle as we're set to begin the third period of the football game. Tennessee has the option, elects to receive, and the Volunteers, we pick it up after receiving the kickoff at the 31-yard line. Carrying the ball first, this is Doug Furness for a gain of two. Here to tell you about it, the coach of the Volunteers, Johnny Majors. Second and eight. I think we're going to see the same play here to Doug Furness again. I beg your pardon. The option, ooh. The pitch goes ooh. wide with it is Coleman. I'll tell you, that's a mighty good job of Chuck Coleman holding on the ball. I, I, from the sidelines, I just almost knew it was going to be a fumble. 
you know, because the Kentucky man was coming hard. Chuck did an excellent job of holding on that ball. And so Tennessee will have it third down and five, and Cockrell's going to throw long. Watch out, folks. Beautiful pass right on the side by Mike Miller. I don't think any place will kick Mike Miller if he gets a hit on it. Touchdown pass. Cockrell to Miller in stride. Let's take a second look. Yep. Why not? He didn't go on very long after Saturday, but let's look at it again today. But we'll probably get that. There's the benefit. That's a beautiful pass. Beautiful pass. Never on broke the sideline, perfect coverage, and Mike Miller goes into the end zone untouched. And the Volunteers take the lead 19 to 7, going for two on the conversion drive. Checking out the alignment, Kentucky asks for timeout. Tennessee with the ball, leading 19 to 7. This is Cockrell. Get in there. Stopped short by Lyons. And just didn't make it. He's definitely down. And we didn't get it in there. That was not a very good play on our part. We've been very successful in our two-point conversions. Extremely so. Better than any football team I've ever been around. Our football team has done a better job of that in kicking probably and discipline as far as holding the ball than any team I've been around. Kentucky returns the kickoff with Andy Mould hauling it back 21 yards. There is a marker down on the play, and Kentucky is going to sustain a penalty, which will move the ball back to the eight-yard line. It'll be first and ten for the Wildcats at the eight. Excellent field position for us right now. We need to keep him backed up. We need to get a break. Penetration by Steve Clue, our senior uh, nose man who came here as a walk-on, John, some five years ago at the Red Shirt. He earned a scholarship three years ago. Good pursuit there. Get outside of our end a little bit. They call us for a late hit. We lose our field position. Let's see what happens here. A second look as Adams our is carrying end. the ball. Very tough. You know, I can see why the official would call that play. And I don't like late hitting. There's no place for it. I also can see why that would be a little bit difficult for a defender right there. I don't want to make excuses, but that was a tough, tough play. Kentucky. That's Terry Henry carrying the football. He goes forward for a gain of 11, and Kentucky, which started at the 8, now has the ball at the 38, first down and 10. Doing better. Our linebackers have been overrunning too many plays this season. We got a little bit better at it last week, and it looks like we're improving this week. Holding penalty against Kentucky. We take the penalty. And it becomes first down and 18 at the 30. Now you still got to keep him back to a great field position. And behind the situation, but they're not going to uh, not going to run up easily. A waggle or a bootleg pass, making up about five, about nine yards. Or Donigan. Now here's Jenkins. Contain him more quickly. Get your hands up. That's a fine pass. And quite like you know, the crowd ruled on that one. Some of our people were upset about it. I think it certainly could have been a call of completion because. I might, I might have missed it, but during the ball game, I think he had a chance to hold on to it here. Let's see what happens. There's Jenkins throwing. It's a completion. Good camera work, John. Outstanding camera work. But I thought it was a completion during the ball game. It certainly shows it there. So Kentucky has it first down. Put the blitz to him. All right. A little better tackle, but you knocked him back, young man. Don't let him fall forward. You had him right in the hole. So we're making progress, but we can still get better. We must get better. Kentucky trailing 19 to 7, but moving with the football and then taking a little too long. So a five-yard penalty will move it back to the 49-yard line, second down and 12. Delay of game. Alan Cockrell has done a great job of avoiding that for us this, uh, this uh, fall. Well, we're going to put more pressure on the pass We have too much time, but we had him well covered. Ruled out of bounds on the reception. That's a a people, second look. People close anyway. He caught the ball, but he's so close to the boundary. You got to always use semi sideline. Out of bounds. His foot was on the line. We had defenders close to him. So the pass is incomplete, and Kentucky will have it. The turn, Reggie. Captain goes our end. He's got out. Oh, 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 fine play. Fine play with Joe Fogel. He had some. Uh, the linebackers picking up the back out of the backfield. A second look. We've got to get more rush out of our ends. Our ends don't get as much rush out of it. It's probably a poorer rush from our ends as we've had. 
I'm sure our cameramen are going to do as well next week as they have this week, but this might be a propitious time to say what a job our game coverage has been all year long, Coach Major. Yep, if we play like we can cover it with a camera, we'll be okay. Kentucky trying for the pooch kick, and it just barely eludes. And uh, Tennessee really had a chance maybe to block it. But it goes into the end zone, so the Volunteers have it first down and 10 up to 20. Counter play. And we're picking up about three. Not enough yardage there. Again, Kentucky is very stingy from tackle to tackle with a running defense against us. Fine play. Good. Very good running. Hard running. Randall Morris. Good movement. Good broken field of running. A little bit more daylight. Bash can do better to get a little daylight. Pull back, uh, Alvin Toes, I guess, takes on the block there. Good cut by Randall Mars. Second effort, falling forward. It's first down for Tennessee, leading in the football game by a score of 19 to 7. Tough pass. It was a good pass. Um, should have been caught, it appeared to me, and good protection. Tennessee with the ball in the third quarter of the game at Knoxville. Over 93,000 fans. For the game, the pass complete by Randall Morris. Good job, Randall. He got just enough of the first down because he saw he's been pursued. I hope he knew where the stakes were for the first down. You know, go as much as you can left and right, but there comes a time you got to go ahead toward the goal line to get the valuable yardage to make the first down. It's first down, Tennessee at midfield. Good running. Good running. And better block. Oh, come on. A little late hit there. Tennessee in Kentucky. Tennessee gets a first down. I know how to work for Frank Broad. I coached defense for him for three years, one year offensively. And I remember he used to say to the office, messed up play in the backfield. No fakey, no blocky, no play. You got a fake. If you're the faking back, you got a block. Then the back has a chance. Cockrell back to throw on second down. Being pursued. Here's the pass. It is incomplete intended for golf. That would have been a fine catch if he caught that ball. Two defenders around him. You know, Allen's having to run for his life a little too much in this game, and I think we've got to do something about that. Vanderbilt's improved their defense this year. Cockwell, screen. Oh, come on, come on, no. It's incomplete, intended for tolls. And remember, and so it's fourth down, and into the game comes the senior from Jessup, Georgia, John Warren. I've told those backs you can't score without the football. Coach Matthews and I have talked about it. The offensive backfield coach, you just can't score without the ball. What's this? John Warren. You, great play. Great play. Mike great play. Tim Rumsey makes the snap. He's the man that goes down, puts an arm on the ball, deflects it. Mike Castillo. And, and, and John, that is, that is wonderful work. Good by the punter. Good by the team. Good coverage, individual effort but also fine work by Bob Harrison's uh, kicking units and the, our offensive staff. I want to tell you a story about uh, school math ball in a minute. Okay, Kentucky backed up. We'll see the fourth period of the football game coming up in just. I'm a factor in the game, Coach Johnny Majors, Kentucky backed up. Well, field position is one of the most important aspects of football, and we've been doing a very good job with it recently. You know, talking about holding on to the football, I've reminded our backs and receivers time after time when I was coaching for Broyles at Arkansas, I used to travel down through uh, southwest Arkansas and northeast Texas, and I went to Hope, Arkansas once, and this coach was tough and aggressive, and every time he critiqued the team in the scrimmage or whatever, he would critique them in Shakespearean type language. <laughs> and one thing I shall never forget, one time a back went through that eight yard line and fumbled on the three, standing up going to the end zone, but he dropped the ball on the three, somebody arm tackled him, he says, what gaineth he that scoreth without the ball? You know, that was a good example. <laughs> I think that was a good example. We're ready to go on the fourth quarter of the football game, and it's going to be Tennessee as we see Kentucky has the ball. They've moved downfield with it, and here back to throw is Jenkins, and here for Tennessee, an yes. interception. That's what you're supposed to do. When the foul sign breaks it, they're going to catch it. Bill Bates again. Bill Bates on the interception. Without that blame you, Bill. I wish you were going to be around here 14 or 15 more years. There's the throw, and here's Bill Bates breaking for the ball Look at the at interception. That, Coach Catavlis. Search him. Husky break to the ball. And the boy ran off. That's the way he was. He's running with good confidence, good surge. A gain of four. It's going to be second down six at the Cat 33. Tennessee leading. 
Get it up in the air. Possible uh, chance for completion, completion? Possibly not. But uh, Kentucky alertly put their hands up. Bootleg pass. Oh, kind of dangerous here. It's incomplete, intended for Miller. What we wanted at the, at the very least was a field goal here because I believe this gives us a little breathing room. We were only leading 12 points, I believe, and 12 points is never a safe lead. Here comes Squad Reves, kicking one slightly more than 50 yards in length. He is seven out of eight from greater than 50 yards. From the end zone, you'll see it. Right through the middle, right through the middle. Eight to nine, over 50 yards, right, John? That's correct. And he is now connected on 13 consecutive field goal tries. Ten, excuse me, on 12 consecutive field goal tries. Now let's go to the other end and watch it from the ground level and watch that ball come through the uprights. End over end, right through the middle of the uprights, without question. Now that's much better. 22 to seven, Tennessee leading and Reves will be kicking off. That was a big field goal, John. 15 point lead now. Kentucky has to score two touchdowns and make a two-point extra point to tie us. I make two two-pointers to beat us. There's the kickoff, and you see it goes through the end zone yet another time. So the Cats have the ball first and 10 at the 20. That's a trick play they put on us. Our team very alertly, very alertly diagnosed the play, and we were penalized for being offside. But frankly, I would not mind a penalty there to save a trick touchdown. Kentucky actually declines the penalty since there was a gain of eight yards on the play. And so it will be for Kentucky second down and two yards to go at the 28 yard line. Trailing now in the football game by a score of 22 to seven. Moving for first down yardage. This is Donegan plowing for three out to the 31. It's first and 10. Chinga's on the rollout. Overran him inside now folks. Don't overrun him. Outside people converge outside. Linebackers lineman inside. The good pursuit angles is very important. The more you have good pursuit angles, the less tackles you will miss, the less cutback runs you will miss. Fourth quarter of the game at Knoxville, Kentucky with Jenkins. Uh oh, Donegan. I like. still like Bill Bates tacked in high. That's better. I like that. That was Bates again on the stop. I'm not hard to get along with. People do it right. I'm really an easy guy. I appreciate it. There you see Adams for a pickup, a second look. I don't like if we tackle below the waist. At the cut by Adams. And sometimes you have to. Sometimes you get him in the way you can. I don't like if we sit back and wait when you got daylight to go take on somebody. It's a first down for the Wildcats. Jenkins rolling right, wants Contain. to throw that football. Contain. You take your hands up. All right. It's hands intercepted. Up. It's intercepted. See what happens? Got your hands up. Mike Trevor got his hands up. Our new captain. And Tommy Sims breaking to the ball. Came up with another key interception. The deflection and interception. And Tennessee with another turnover. Let's take a second look. A little slow on containment, but he did react. Mike is such a fine athlete and a great competitor. He reacted out of courage and hustle. And there he's looking to make a, a, a block, block to help out. So Tennessee will have the ball first down to 10 to go. And this is Randall Morris taking the pitch and moving forward for a gain of five. Second and five at the 41. Alan Cockrell very alertly calling a timeout to save us a five-yard penalty. Again, defensive coaching is fun. This is Chuck fun. Coleman. It's no fun to sit back and wait. All right, almost broke it all away. Chuck Coleman, 24 yards. He's got to make defense exciting. I want Chuck is good blocking, better blocking. All right, Bill Mayo makes a good block, knocks his man back. He almost breaks this one all away. He's really, really fighting for every yard he got there. 24 yards on the play, and Tennessee has moved to the Cat 35-yard line, first down 10. Interference for Kentucky. Penalty marker is down. A long discussion ensued among the officials. Cockrell. And as you see, the officials are discussing it. It really wasn't open that time. And so a penalty will be stepped off, and Tennessee has the ball first down. A trap play. Kentucky, uh, the Kentucky linebacker makes a good play there. Randall Mars carried the ball. Falls forward for three yards. 
pitch. Option Morris. play. All right. Took up some valuable yardage. Eating up the clock also. Tuck the ball, Randall. Tuck the ball. Eight yard gain. It's first and 10 Tennessee at the 19. But Randall's a good runner. Occasionally, he has to be a little more conscious of holding on the ball. He is down, even though the ball bounced out after he hit the ground. He is down legally. Good effort. Good effort. That's Morris again. Picked up one. Second and nine. Tennessee with the line 75, Charles Gillespie, Mayo, Matthews. And only one senior in that group. All right. Good job putting his hold and better blocking. Amazing line. What a good back to do once you give him some daylight. See what so Randall Morris. What a nice body angle. He's giving his defenders nothing but shoulder pads and helmet to hit. You get more yardage, you protect the ball better. A little mix up there on a cadence. Can't have that in scoring territory, four down territory. We've been a much better discipline team this year than any time before. We cannot let that happen. It's first and goal from the 13 yard line. And Tennessee seeing the clock tick down again. A timeout is used. The score in the game is Tennessee 22, Kentucky 7. Cockwell, pitch. Almost hit a seam. <laughs> Morris gains back the five yards lost in the penalty, but now it's second down and eight. And That's once more, twice is too often for that. The illegal procedure, Tennessee, five yard penalty. The only thing I can see disappointing during the game is that uh, our offense had a chance to put a couple more touchdowns on the board and not have to rely on Quadra Bays. We can't always lean on him. We need to get the ball across the goal line. If we did better last week. Ah. Cockrell is thrown back to the 17 yard line where Tennessee will have it third down and goal. We've got to do better in our protection. And Kentucky is doing a good job rushing too. They're, they're, they're tough. Morris up the middle moves for a gain of four. It's fourth down and goal at the 13 yard line. Randall, don't forget to can't score without the ball. And Didn't into the football the game comes Fuad Revae. This yeah. attempt will be from the 21-yard line, a 31-yard try by Reves, who has three already in the game. There it is. You can't always take it for granted that young man going to He's an outstanding performer. Has great power, like everybody does. But we've got to get that ball in the tough, hard way more. So Tennessee leads at the end of three quarters by a score of 25 to 7. We'll see more action in Joss. 25 to 7 added with another field goal by Rave. So the final score is registered Tennessee 28, Kentucky 7. To the dressing room where Bob Kessling is ready to visit with the balls. Quad Rave is another good day for the volunteers of five field goals, but the man that really is the vital cog in that is snapper Tim Rumsey. Tim, congratulations. I guess you need to be congratulated almost as much as Quad. Well, slightly, but not as much as Quad. <laughs> Quad is too consistent, I tell you. He's uh, come that way all year. You get in the general vicinity for Quad, and he's going to put it through the field goal. So and I guess it that, must, that must get your concentration up knowing that sure you've got to get it back there. It does. It really does. I tell you, our times are the most important thing for us, and we've had good times all year, and that's been the very key to it all. Snapping is an art, and you've got it down pat. Well, I wouldn't say down pat, but I'd say I've had real good luck at it. Uh, I've had a lot of fun doing it, and it's something you have to really concentrate at. It's something that didn't really come by naturally anything. It's mostly concentration, and uh, it's uh, sometimes hard to come to the game when you're cold and haven't been playing. But yeah. other than that, uh, I, I tell you, I've really enjoyed it. It's, it's good. One of the senior members of the offensive line, Charles Gillespie, with us. Charles, tell us about the final game in Neyland Stadium for you. Well, it was, it was a great victory. You know, I, I'm glad to go out this year as a... My last game is winning, you know, and so far it's a great season, you know, we still have two games to go, you know, and we look very forward to that, you know, especially one next week, you know, and I think through my years here, you know, each year the team have became closer together, you know, more as a team, you know, and that, that really makes a lot of difference this last year to me. The offensive line again today was able to move Kentucky back and get the running game opened up. Yes, we got started off to a slow start, but beginning to sight in the second half, uh, we picked things up and began to move them around a lot better, began to pick up the blitz, you know, we just... Defense had a great game, you know, and they, they kept us in the game, but, you know, we came along with our blocking assignments and we had to pick up their starts. Great. Senior Mike Miller, a touchdown pass today. Congratulations, Mike. Tell us about the offensive effort today. Thank you, Bob. I think our offense, uh, we played pretty good today. The offensive line blocked well. 
Our running game, which has come along the last couple of weeks, uh, the guys running pretty good, and now we have a balanced attack pretty much. We were talking in the radio booth. It seemed like you were trying to maybe lower Kentucky to sleep and then burn them, and you did. Yes, we were uh, pretty much running the ball a lot. You know, but the running game was going. Then we uh, caught him in a blitz from man to man, and the guy had me in the open field, and Allen just made a perfect throw. Ball control was a key, but it seemed like you could throw on him when you wanted to. Yes, I think we could have uh, threw a little more, but with our running game operating like it is, the guys blocking up front, you know, it's, it's just great to be like that. That's about the final game in Neyland Stadium. And it's great to go out in the winter, you know, get a Peach Bowl bid, and I think we have to take care of uh, Vanderbilt down in Nashville first. Tight end Jeff Smith from Milan, Tennessee, his first touchdown catch at Tennessee. Congratulations. Thank you, Bob. Tell us about the touchdown catch and your thoughts on today's game. Well, um, really, touchdown catch, it was like played before, well, two plays before we ran option, you know, and it was fake option and tight end breaking out into the flat and it was wide open. It just so happened that it worked. The offensive line was a key today. You seemed like you controlled the football when you had to. Yes, they were. Uh, offensive line, they blocked pretty, I think they blocked fairly well all day and came back second half and um, halftime, got a few adjustments in the second half. And seemed like it just kind of blew the game open. And you guys, I, I think you knew you had to win today and came out, I thought, pretty fired up. Uh, yeah, we did. Uh, we went down to Kentucky last year on a pretty high note and got, kind of got upset there about 21 to 10. But we felt like we had something to prove to the people today and we came through and did what we had to do. Great. Captain of the Volunteers, Mike Cooper. With it. I guess that's got a pretty good ring to it, doesn't Mike? Yes, it does. And it was really exciting running through the team for the last time. And as far as being nominated for captain, it was really a shock to me. Let's talk about the game today. I guess that's the way you wanted to end your career at Neyland Stadium, wasn't it? Right. It was a good win for the whole team, really. And uh, as far as defense, I think we attacked better than what we did last, last week. And we uh, did a lot of things that really affected uh, Kentucky offensively. I thought one of the keys in the second half, you got them bottled up and never let them out. No, we just kept pouring on more steam. Following the game, a big moment for Tennessee fans and the players and the team. It was uh, There was an invitation issued by the Peach Bowl. Johnny Gresham of the Peach Bowl Committee is with us, and I know it's a big day for not only you folks, but for the Tennessee team as well. Well, it certainly is a big day for Tennessee. Uh, the Peach Bowl is very excited to extend the invitation to a team like Tennessee. Tennessee has picked up a lot of momentum in the last three or four weeks. Uh, in my opinion, being an old halfback from Georgia Tech, uh, Tennessee probably has three or four of the finest wide receivers in the country and probably the best uh, kicking game in the country. I mean, by a score 28 to 7. The Volunteers now 5-3 and 1, 2-1 one and 3-1 uh, and 1 of the Southeastern Conference. Coach Johnny Majors, reflections on this game. The Peach Bowl will be Tennessee and Iowa, but Vanderbilt Saturday at Nashville. I do not want to play the Kentucky game again. Anytime you can beat them 2 to nothing, I will take it. I'm very delighted to get the, to, for us to receive the Peach Bowl bid. It's a class bowl. It's going to be on a national television network. We're looking forward to going to Atlanta. But first, we have a bigger objective, a bigger challenge. We have a chance to have a very good finish in the Southeastern Conference. But Vanderbilt will present the biggest challenge that we've seen in some time. You know, we bring out the best in them. They'll be foaming at the mouth and smoke will be coming out of the ears. And we've got to get ready to play our best football game against the Wild and Woolly Commodores. That will be Saturday at Nashville. The game is a sellout. The broadcast on the Vol Radio Network will get underway at 1.15 Eastern, 12.15 Central Standard Time. We'll be back again next week. You'll be seeing the highlights of the game between Tennessee and Vanderbilt. Till then, for Coach Johnny Majors, John Ward says, so long, everyone. <laughs>